Dollmakers have long been at the frontiers of innovation. New ideas are never in short supply, however some have been more successful and long-lasting than others. Join us as we explore the doll laboratory. There's no business like show business. From the golden age of Hollywood, Monica, a rare and groundbreaking high fashion beauty. Monica of Hollywood is a vintage star that evokes the glamour of the golden age of cinema. This doll's looks are presumed to be inspired by the likeness of Monica Bannister, a little-known actress today, who appeared in the 1933 movie, Mystery of the Wax Museum. The doll certainly shares this starlet's smoldering eyes and distinctive Cupid's bow lips. The dolls were created in 1941 by Mrs. Hansi Scheer. Monica was quite unique, unlike any other doll available at that time. Manufactured for only 10 years by the Monica Doll Studios of Hollywood, the first dolls appeared in Toys and Novelties magazine. Mrs. Shear's great innovation was to root real human hair, directly into the composition material of the doll's heads. Although nowadays rooted hair is a commonplace feature of vinyl dolls, this was the first time that doll's hair had been inserted this way. Monica dolls are not marked at all, but the rooting and the distinctive face paint makes them easily identifiable. It was important to Mrs. Cher that the hair had more versatility than the traditional glued on wigs. She was keen that the dolls would offer as much play value as possible. Monica's locks could be combed, curled, and finger waved. The hairline often featured a widow's peak, reminiscent of the actress Margaret Lockwood in the movie Wicked Lady. Human hair in shades of blonde, brunette, black, and auburn, was used. Monica is jointed at the neck, shoulders, and hips. The third and fourth fingers are molded together and the nails are painted red. The feet are flat, so the dolls can stand more easily, as opposed to the later teenage dolls, with high heel feet. The composition used for the dolls' heads is of a much finer quality than that used for the bodies. It does, however, craze very easily and it has been noted that the dolls should not be moved rapidly from a hot to a cold environment. Extremes of humidity should also be avoided. A range of sizes was available to purchase, ranging from 11 to 24 inches. Although the dolls are universally known as Monica today, it seems that they were given different names according to their height. Other characters introduced in 1942, as 17-inch dolls, were known as Veronica, Joan, and Rosalind. It is thought that these were depictions of Veronica Lake, Joan Crawford, and Rosalind Russell, some of the top film stars of the era. The dolls were sold in exclusive stores throughout the United States and Canada. Monica was advertised as the Miss America of dolls. FAO Schwartz put its own label on some of the dolls, and Monica was shown in the 1947 Montgomery Ward Christmas catalog. The high-end image of these dolls was reflected in their cost, vintage ads quote prices in excess of $20, quite a sum for the 1940s. By the 1960s, vinyl dolls with rooted hair became the norm in the industry. By this time Hansi Scher's dolls were obsolete. But she had changed the industry with her small doll company producing a rare, unique, and high-quality offering for today's collector. The pop-apart doll that launched many budding dressmakers with her cut and drape fashions. Created in 1963 by American character, Poppy's unique selling point was that her body popped apart, so as to be easily redressed in a wardrobe of creative cut-out clothes. The outfits were pre-printed on vinyl sheets, in patterns resembling top fashions. Once cut out, the shapes could be placed over the pegs that held Poppy together, and draped to make instant couture. Voila! The main sales pitch for Poppy was that no sewing was required. As it said on the box, cut and drape fashions, no sew fun for girls. Marketed as a fashion doll, her image was enhanced by the spare modern illustrations on the packaging. There was remarkably little similarity between these lovely drawings and the doll in the box or her fashions. But this should not detract from the doll herself, who remains a little charmer. Her name is Poppy and you pop pop, she's the fashion model at you pop pop, make dozens of outfits with a pop pop, that's Poppy the fashion model. Poppy is like a real dress designer's mannequin, and you're the designer. She pops apart so you can easily dress Poppy. Just cut out the material as marked, drape, shape, then pop Poppy together again. You've created Poppy's gorgeous outfit without sewing a stitch. And Poppy has three glamorous hairdos. 
She's a blonde, a brunette, a redhead. You change her hair with her outfits, new look, new clothes with a pop pop. That's Poppy, the fashion model. You know, Poppy comes with a complete outfit and three hairdos for three dollars. Extra fashion kits, a dollar twenty-five each, wherever American toys are sold. Poppy. Twinkie, a teeny tiny 60s doll that packs a load of play value. Her rubbery vinyl wardrobe has proved to be resilient over the years. This little doll, made by Louis Marx in 1965, stands at a diminutive 5 inches tall. Twinkie was sold as a complete box set, including all clothing and accessories. There's nothing further to collect. The doll has no relation to, and postdates, the Twinkie snack cakes by Hostess Brands. Another innovation, invented by James Alexander Dewar in 1930. Hostess Twinkie Town for some golden sponge cake Twinkies. Watch out! They're stealing the Hostess Twinkies! Watch this. Here's your award. Thanks! Mmm, <gasps> creamy filling. Yep, you get a big delight in every bite of Hostess Twinkies. But let's get back to the doll and have a rummage in her wardrobe. She is made of molded plastic and jointed at the neck shoulders, and hips. Straight out of the box, Twinkie is bald, with painted socks, shoes, and face. The new concept for Twinkie was the use of a rubbery vinyl for her range of molded clothes. Fastenings, at the back of dresses and skirts, were by means of a peg and hole closure. The stole, hats, and wigs simply fitted to the doll's body shape. The great advantage here was that the clothes were durable, didn't easily soil or fade, and there were no snaps or buttons to fall off. Marx hit on a winning formula with these dolls, and produced a range of 11-inch tall action figures, with flexible molded vinyl clothes. These included the Johnny and Jane West line of Wild West figures. It's a stampede! They're in trouble! Will they escape? It's up to you! With the Best of the West, by Marx! Rush Captain Maddox to the rescue, along with General Custer. Who started it? Ferocious Chief Geronimo on his horse Comanche. And there's Johnny West with his horse Thunderbolt. Jay West drives the buckboard with his sister Janice, while his twin brother, riding Honcho, fires to turn the herd. There's Jane West. Can she control the covered wagon? The stampede is getting closer. Will Jane and Janice escape? It's up to you. You're the boss of the Wild West with your Best of the West collection. Each figure complete with up to 31 pieces of authentic gear. And look how you can pose Comanche! Get the best of the West by Marx! Mike Hazard, the international spy. And April Dancer, the girl from Uncle figure based on the popular 1960s TV series, starring Stephanie Powers. This last doll is particularly hard to find, and can command astonishingly high prices on the secondary market. Twinkie dolls were often kept intact in the box by their young owners, so it is relatively easy to find complete sets today. Amy. A doll that never really took off, despite a clever concept. Following the success of hair-themed dolls, such as Tressy, by American character, Hasbro entered the market in 1972 with Amy. The unique selling point of this 18-inch tall doll was not a growing strand of hair, as for Tressy and her larger cousin Chrissy. Hasbro's offering had a whole series of wigs and wiglets, attached to her head by means of painful-looking snaps, that pressed directly into locator holes studded into her scalp. Not a wig doll as such, although a full wig was available, rather she had a range of hair pieces to create many styles. This doll was clearly not designed for slouching around the house, her range of outfits suggested that she spent her time attending only the best parties. Ever dressed for cocktails and not for domestic chores, the box doll wore a long formal gown and a random paisley effect, very on trend for the 1970s. Amy was available in both Caucasian and black forms, with box illustrations that looked very little like the doll. Meet beautiful Amy, the new doll with high fashion hair you can brush and style and wash. Amy has her own styling booklet, and with her tumbling flowing hair, you can create spectacular high fashion hairdos. You look super Amy! Amy's accessory wig box with hair pieces and jewelry give you many glamorous ways to style Amy. Perfect! 
Amy with hairpiece jewelry, styling brush and booklet, accessory wig box sold separately. Mimi. She'd like to teach the world to sing, and while she's at it, this doll shows off her wacky round the world take on national costumes. Mimi might not have been the world's first singing doll, but she certainly had the biggest ambitions. Spurred on by the global phenomenon of Coca-Cola's 1971 theme tune, I'd like to teach the world to sing, in perfect harmony, Remco rapidly brought this doll to the marketplace, with copyrights in both 1972 and 1973. Using the TV ad with its hilltop location, and a panoramic sweep of multicultural youth as inspiration, Mimi was set for international travel. Spain channels Balenciaga. Scotland could be by a young Vivian Westwood, by way of Robin Hood in Sherwood Forest. Israel has something of Yves Saint Laurent about it. Crossing a Vatican City Guard with a Venetian Carnival, Italy has a militaristic look. As does Poland, which is not the anticipated embroidered peasant blouse and dirndl combo. Perhaps Germany offers the most predictable approach, a highly detailed ensemble with fine pin tucks, and plenty of embellishments, and not least, the Edelweiss trimmed waistcoat. Eschewing phrase books, or any kind of regular communication, this doll used the language of song to communicate, using the innovative approach of mini vinyl records to create the sound. The basic 20-inch tall doll, available as black and Caucasian, came complete with discs, song sheets and a stand. She sang her own versions of I'd Like to Teach. In English, French, and German, plus Greek, Polish, Hebrew, and both Spanish and Italian, by inserting the records into a battery-operated player inside the doll's chest cavity. She wore a Courage-influenced world traveler outfit, with a jaunty tam o -shem. As Remco pointed out, Mimi knows no boundaries. Only the brotherhood of song. But the outfits were the thing. Available separately and beautifully made, these were a real 70s spin on national costume. And if you hadn't heard enough of Mimi's dulcet tones, each one included two more records with local folk tunes, in both English and the country's own language. To help you get into the swing of things, there were further song sheets for hours of sing-along fun. Only six costumes were made by Remco. Despite the inclusion of French and Greek in the basic doll's repertoire, these countries' outfits never came about. It's interesting to speculate what the designers might have done for these costumes, based on their other interpretations. Remember, every boy wants a Remco toy. And so do girls. And so do girls. Gorgeous creatures. Mattel's anthropomorphic line of fashion dolls were unusual, to say the least. They caught the imagination of kids at the time, but the line was not developed further. The gorgeous creatures were a line of seven and a half inch tall fashion dolls made by Mattel in 1979. The figures were voluptuous, and they featured animal heads with full makeup. Although a little macabre, they do possess a certain charm. The full lineup was cowbell, has a creamy complexion. Miss Heavenly Hippo, as pretty as a pitcher, Miss Giddy Yup, a real close horse, and Princess Pig, loves snacks Fifth Avenue. The dolls were billed as having pretty parlor hairdos, and shapely poses, with movable arms and legs. Each was fully dressed in a gown with hat, shoes, stole, hanky, opera gloves, and boyfriend's picture with a frame. Additionally, there were some plastic hairstyling and dressing table accessories included. It's possible that Mattel was influenced by the success of Jim Henson's The Muppet Show for this collection. Surprisingly enough, Henson doesn't appear to have taken action against Mattel for the very close likeness of Princess Pig to The Muppet star, Miss Piggy. For this story, we have teamed the gorgeous creatures up with some of the newest animal-themed fashion dolls, the Out Collector figures by Patrick Grange, Tassa Tassa, Meow Meow, and Atu Tassa. A 1970s extravaganza. Miss Heavenly Hippo with Meow Meow. Miss Giddy Yup and Atu Tasa.
Princess Pig with Basic Tasa Tasa. Cowbell paired with Tasa Tasa, my blue bear. Introducing gorgeous creatures, Cowbell, Miss Giddy Up, and Miss Heavenly Hippo. Oh, the most glamorous, gaga, gorgeously outrageous little beastly beauties ever. We call them gorgeous creatures. Your kids will call them crazy fashion doll fun. Hit it, girls. Gorgeous creatures, fashion features, lots of things more. Your kids to do gorgeous creature styles, new from Mattel. It's interesting to note that Princess Pig is conspicuously absent from the lineup shown in the TV commercial for Gorgeous Creatures. Only the three other dolls, Cowbell, Miss Heavenly Hippo and Ms. Giddy Yup are shown. So it's possible that there was some conflict with broadcast copyright around Jim Henson's Miss Piggy, although Mattel's production of the actual Princess Pig doll clearly went ahead. La Dolce Bombola, a mini burlesque beauty made by He Park, is a 1 6 scale resin doll. Amongst Bombola's unique features is a set of solid resin wigs, that fasten on magnetically. Bombola is 11 and a half inches tall, a French resin doll introduced in 2010 by Young He Park of South Korea, under the brand name of My Dolly. She has blue inset eyes, applied lashes, and wears solid resin wigs to avoid those annoying flyaway hairs. She's a curvaceous doll, inspired by World War II pinups, as well as Betty Page, and Dita Von Tees. She is such a saucy looking girl, with an air of having been up to no good, even though it's all probably totally innocent. La Dolce Bombola was launched as an exclusive gift set by Oat Doll Magazine, in February 2010, and was the cover star for that issue. This doll is never thrown by life's catastrophes, nor willing to miss out on happy hour. Despite the deluge, Bombola is sustained by a nutritious dry martini, until the plumber arrives. Go Go Flamenco in an adapted Suzette Portraits outfit. She is channeling Balenciaga with that Tariador and Puffball vibe. A vintage Spanish souvenir doll gets it on in the background. Who knew she could sing? A nightclub natural, Bombola steals a dress from Madame Alexander Suzette, from the Motown event, complete with glittering shoes, necklace, and microphone. I wonder if she does requests as well. Working as a waitress in a cocktail bar, Bombola wears Madame Alexander's Liesel outfit, with vintage heels. Fabiola, the Latina bombshell, created by Mike Boos. Fabiola of Hollywood is a modern fashion doll, inspired by the 1950s, with a singularly unique feature. According to her bio, Fabiola of Hollywood was a fashion model and dancer, who rose to major sex symbol status during the 1950s and 1960s. Oozing with sparkling glamour, Fabiola was known for shocking Hollywood society with her slinky over-the-top style, and daring plunging necklines. The doll even has her own shopping experience, Cedric's of Hollywood. Styled as the petite department store, filled with dozens of dazzling darlings for all your needs and glamour. Where you too, can be a lucky star. Shop today before everything is snatched up. Big style. Doll sized. For Fabiola, the eyebrows are the thing. In other words, a little fashion mishap became a sensation. Fabiola's eyebrows were plucked and bleached a few too many times, and never really grew back. Tired of drawing them on, she presented reusable eyebrows to Cedric. Since eyebrow fashions changed quite quickly, and hordes of girls were in the same boat, they gave them a try. Word spread and within two months production needed to be amped up to meet demands. Brows were produced in colors to match current clothing collections. Fabiola suddenly had it all. Men wanted her. Women, and some men, wanted to be her. This self-professed pin-uppity fashion muse was famous for her glamour and sex appeal. A devotee of the bodycon fit, decades before it was a thing, as well as the plunging neckline, she was courted by the rich and famous during the 1950s and early 1960s. 
As ever in the world of fashion, nothing lasts forever. Fabiola's voluptuous curves were less in demand as the 60s progressed, and a more gamine look, as exemplified by Twiggy, moved onto the scene. So what happened to the fabulous Fabiola? As the coffers ran dry, the Barica bombshell moved back to her hometown in Puerto Rico, to stretch out her remaining funds. Far from the high life of Hollywood, not to mention London, Paris, and New York, she earned money where she could. Her modeling career was waning, but not over, thanks to good bone structure and a few surgical interventions. A shoot from the 1980s led to her rediscovery. As a favor to a local milliner in Mayaguez, she did a gig as a hat model for his store. A cache of vintage show cards from this photo session was unearthed from the back of a drawer in a dusty old shop fitting. These images are shown here as a celebration of Fabiola's later work, years after her Hollywood fame and fortune. Even in these pictures, without the benefit of a team of stylists, and using rudimentary lighting, Fabiola's star quality shines through. The self-adhesive vinyl eyebrows make Fabiola's hand-painted face more expressive than the average fashion doll. The brows may be repositioned at will, to create a unique range of expressions. Fabiola is 11 and a half inches tall. This pin uppity glamour doll is a one-of-a-kind work of art, for the adult collector. Oh, there's also a single hairdressing poster from a failed promotion for a local peluqueria. Possibly more attention could have been paid to the roots. To bring us right up to date, with the emergence of older models, Fabiola experienced a later in life blooming and change of fortunes. Obviously she has retained her magnificent mane of hair, but now it's a stunning frosted alabaster. <laughs>